What's up, guys? Welcome back to Boost Brothers Garage. Yeah, long time no see for Zach over here. Yeah, sorry I moved. Yeah, we'll explain more later. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're back on the Cayman, which is really exciting. I know a lot of you guys have been begging for Cayman content. Exciting for me, too. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't for lack of effort. We were waiting on the crankshaft and the rods and a couple other odds and ends, and here they are. We're super excited to show you. And uh, start a little assembly and get this thing rolling. That's right. Stay tuned. Before we get too deep into actually assembling some of this stuff, we just wanted to quickly touch on what showed up. Uh, so we got our Carrillo connecting rods. Those of you guys that know the name Carrillo know that these are pretty much the best you can get. And since we're slapping this guy on and throwing some boost at this engine, these are gonna be a requirement. So these are fully forged H-beam rods. They should be able to handle anything we throw at it. In a previous video, we showed you our JE forged pistons. These things are pretty ridiculous. They're, they're stupid light. They're awesome. We're gonna weigh all this stuff. That's part of the assembly process. Um, and then our, our crank, which has been modified by Vision Motorsports. They went through and they did some machine work that, that we'll show a little bit deeper when we actually start assembling that stuff. They basically made it into a 911 cup car crank for us, so. Which it just sounds cool to be like, yeah, the engine's got a cup car crank in it. Yeah, hopefully it sounds like a cup car. <laughs> well, it's not, because of the turbo. Yeah, well, it's gonna cup sound, car with blow off valves. It's gonna sound awesome. The first thing I wanna do with all this stuff is weigh it. And the reason that we're weighing everything is that we want to match components so that each assembly ends up being as close to the same weight as possible. In other words, heaviest piston goes with lightest rod. I'm expecting that these are gonna be very close. If you look at the bottom of these pistons, you'll notice that they have spots where it looks like someone drilled into them. And that's where they're taking material out of them so no two pistons at least in this set are exactly the same i'm expecting most of the pistons are going to be very similar hopefully within a couple grams of each other but yeah we're gonna go ahead and start doing that now and i will just use a magic marker uh, and i'll mark directly on the components themselves what they are what yeah no yes what's that 566 it's backwards i can't see it 566 Five. What are you drawing right on my brand new rods? Yeah. Now they're custom. Okay. Ooh, 565. You guys take a look at our new scale. We picked that up at Wally World on the way here. Pretty sure they thought we were drug dealers buying a digital scale at 10 o'clock at night. But check this out. On the shelf it said it was $8.92. When I checked out, they tried to charge me $25 for it. No, sir. I said, homie, don't play that. You ain't getting me. <laughs> and you know what? I got that $25 scale for $8.92. All of these rods are within two grams of each other. The lightest is 564, heaviest is 566. 398. Why not draw that on top? I'm going to put the overall um, diameter on the top. So. We will be measuring the diameter of the pistons and then we'll be measuring the bore of the cylinders and we'll be doing the exact same thing. So if one piston's just a hair larger and one cylinder's a hair smaller, then we'll put those together. So real quick, let's do a mic Q&A, just real quick. Okay. So uh, Mike? Yes. Can you stop what you're doing? I can work and talk at the same time. Have you ever built an M96? No. Uh, do you know what you're doing? Kind of. Okay, right now you know what you're doing? Yes. Uh, because this is pretty self-explanatory for you? Yes. What about cam timing? No. Okay. I mean, on a Porsche Flat 6, no. I've degreed cams on American V8s, so I've, I, I can do cam timing there. Uh, <laughs> but, but no, I've never assembled one of these engines, so we're learning. Luckily, I have some people that have reached out in the past after they've seen our videos and offered to, to help, which is great. 
Dwayne at Vision Motorsports has been awesome. He said anytime we need help to reach out and he'll try to help walk us through it. So I obviously don't know what I don't know. Let me explain Mike's motto to you guys. Yes. If somebody else in the universe can do it, he finds it hard to believe that he cannot do it himself. Yes and no. That That is... Uh, that is true for anything uh, mechanical. So not like athletic? Uh, no, no, I can't knock out Mike Tyson. Uh, I can't run as fast as Usain. Usain Bolt. I can't throw like Peyton Manning, six foot five, super laser rocket arm. But if someone else can build an M96, I can build an M96. Pistons, done. Wrist pins, hopefully these are all very similar, 114. 113. It took me a minute to figure out all my math, but it's done. And we are within one gram total weight for all the different assemblies. So four of them will be 1,076 grams, two will be 1,075, and that's close enough. The next thing I'd like to go ahead and do before we assemble the pistons to the rods is actually go ahead and measure all these pistons and get those measurements written down on the top here. And then we will assemble these to the rods. So what we're doing here is finding the largest point on the piston. When you find that, you'll just barely be able to move this micrometer all the way across the piston. When you find that spot, that's gonna be your measurement. I got all the pistons measured. I'm a little rusty with my micrometer skills, unfortunately. Uh, so I was kind of fumbling through it, a lot of trial and error and adjusting and readjusting. They're within a couple ten thou of each other for sure. I think they're within one ten thou. Regardless, they're, they're extremely close. It's completely negligible. With that done, let's go ahead and start assembling these to the connecting rods. As you're about to see, installing these circlips absolutely sucks. Actually, I think I cut out about 45 minutes worth of me fumbling around with it unsuccessfully. But it's a good thing we didn't get them all installed. After we left the shop, Zach and I were talking about the assembly of a Porsche Flat 6. And if you go back to the disassembly videos or you just have a general idea of how the Porsche Flat 6 goes together. You have a crank carrier uh, in the middle that holds the crank, which obviously the pistons and rods are attached to. One case half slides down onto that and then the other case half slides on the other three pistons and then they bolt together, right? So we're sitting there thinking to ourselves, if the pistons are connected to the rods and the rod and piston assemblies are connected to the crank, how exactly do you get the case halves on with having to compress the rings and everything else that goes into that? So after a little bit of research, uh, we found out that you would take three pistons and rods and go ahead and drop them in one case half, put the crank block down in there, attach those rods to the crank, and then the other side, and this is where it gets really interesting, you just slide the pistons in a little bit from the bottom, and then you have to lower the case half down, and then you have to go in and you have to install the wrist pins into the piston and rod, and then there's this long tool you stick through with that circlip in it, and you actually install the circlips basically with everything already in the engine. Yeah. Everything that happens in the next part of the video, as far as what a circlip is, how it's installed into the piston, the fact that you should probably get a specialized tool to do it because using your thumb and a screwdriver really sucks. That's all good information. But absolutely do not, if you are building a Porsche Flat 6, at least a late model, install all six pistons to the rods. I'm gonna start by putting them in the pairs that I already determined. So 398 and 565 and a 113, that's this guy. Now that we've done that, we're gonna take some assembly lube, coat the 
piston pin. Rammer home. Now, this is where the fun part begins. We have to capture that connecting rod in the piston. Sometimes those are pressed in, but in this application, it's a floating wrist pin. So if you look, I can just slide that thing in and out all day long. So you have to capture it, right? And they use what's called spiral locks. And spiral locks are a pain in the ass. Actually, these are a little bit different than what I'm used to using. I don't necessarily know exactly what these are called. Typically, a spiral lock is a, a flat piece of metal that's been wound, and you kind of have to take it and spring it out like a slinky, and then you start on one end and you start just pushing it through all the way around in a circle. Uh, this is a little bit different. Mike's gonna check the instructions. Yeah, since I haven't used these not spiral locks before, I just wanna check. Hmm. I'm gonna try to do this. Man, what if we get defeated this early in the build and we can't even put the locks in for the wrist pins? Do we just have to call it quits then? Can you try not to scratch up my brand new pistons? Yeah. I can try a lot of different things. We're gonna take a... What do we do when we can't figure out how to do something? We YouTube it. <laughs> so, we're, we're YouTubers YouTubing how to do this so that we can then tell you how to do it because, well, I've never done these and they're proving to be quite difficult. Hello, and welcome to another Molly Motorsports Piston Tech presentation. I'm Justin Dossett, and today we'll be discussing tools, tips, and tricks for installing our round wire locks. Good news. We figured it out. Oh. Well, YouTube. We found a video by Manly, uh, the piston manufacturer, and uh, they had some helpful tips and tricks. And we also now know the correct uh, vernacular. This is called a round wire lock, or a circlip. And this little thing here, this angle is called a tang. I also talked about the notch in the piston and it's called a dig out notch. That's where you can get a screwdriver in there and dig that lock out. But also because this has the tang, it has to sit in here a very particular way. So this one, it needs to sit like this so that the tang sits on the sloped side here and not on the real sharp 90 degree side. We have one installed and it looks like that. The question is, can we do it 11 more times? So last time I put the tang in where it's supposed to go, put a little pressure on the clip over here, a lot of pressure, and then try to pry it in and push down at the same time, hopefully. And you can, yeah, yeah, woo, yes, success. Oh man, that feels good. Uh, yeah, so now only 10 more to go. Man, what a pain in the ass. How's it going? I'm gonna be honest with you, this is one of the more frustrating things that I've ever done in my entire life. Worse? Or better than windshield removal. Worse. Oh! We've got two pistons connected to the rods. We've got four to go. We destroyed one circlip. Uh, I can't feel my thumbs and it's 1.30 in the morning. So we're gonna call it here. Anyhow, thanks for watching. See you next time.